The thing that really inspired me to play guitar was uh, Steven Adler had an electric guitar at his house when I first met him when we were about 13, 14 years old. And uh, he used to plug this thing in and, and uh, just bang on it to Kiss Records on full blast. That in and of itself was very exciting. And so I opted to play bass. Since he was playing guitar, I was going to play bass. And I went around to a local music school. I didn't have an instrument. and. Uh, went in there and talked to the teacher and I said, you know, I want to learn how to play bass. And he was, sat me down and tried to ask me a few questions, trying to sort of figure out what it was that I was really getting at, what I, what I wanted to achieve. And while he was talking to me, he was playing some Eric Clapton licks, I think cream licks on electric guitar. And I was like, that's what I want to do, because I really didn't know that much about guitar at the time. And so that was it. And then I, I switched over to guitar and my grandmother gave me a, a beat up old Spanish acoustic that had one string on it. I started learning on the one string. There was no stopping me at that point. I was so obsessed with it. No matter what obstacles or hurdles there were, I never accepted no for an answer and I just kept at it. I'm still inspired really by the same guitarist I was inspired by when I first started. Jimmy Page, um, Joe Perry, Brad Whitford, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Keith Richards and, and Mick Taylor, uh, Billy Gibbons, Joe Walsh. Those are like the, off the top of my head, the main guys I was listening to at that point. When I used to buy uh, records for, from different bands that I was interested in, that, I didn't go and buy their studio records, I bought their live albums. So I was definitely into the sort of like, you know, crazy live performance kind of thing, you know, that sort of attack. It wasn't about, um, you know, sort of recording studio achievements, sonic uh, nuances in the studio. It was about spur of the moment live playing, you know, totally uh, that energy that goes along with it. And also about the energy of a band playing together and solos that were in context of the song and not just look at what I can do in five minutes, just guitar soloing, you know. Apocalyptic Love was uh, designed to be live in the studio and captured. No overdubs, no edits, no anything, just pure live recording. Whereas this one, we recorded live in the studio, but there's overdubs, there's harmonies. I just wanted to make a more produced record that had, I, there was a lot of songs in Apocalyptic Love, which I would have loved to have done some layering on and some harmonies and stuff, but we strove to do it live. So on this record, I, I, I sought after getting a really good recording, really good, good textured recording. I was really lucky stumbling, you know, across Brent and Todd because they're just phenomenal uh, rock and roll guys. It, Brent's just got this great sort of a little bit behind the beat, firm rock feel that he's just a great player. And Todd's an amazing bass player and a uh, great singer as well. And then Miles was just somebody that really I sort of came upon more or less by accident um, when I was doing my first solo record with all the different singers. And I've been hearing a lot about him for years prior to actually meeting him. And he just has an amazing voice and, and you know, another, uh, you know, and he was a great lyricist and, and uh, an important factor with, with Brent, Todd and Miles is they're just really great guys and, and really easy to work with. But we've, we've sort of developed a, a real chemistry since 2010 when we first started working together. It's a, the individual personality is really where the, the sound comes from. I mean, that took me years before I started to realize that, you know, I'm, I've always been a less is more person, but I've started to realize more and more that less is more. And I found that it's really about, you know, the, the individual as far as what the actual sound and, you know, and the style and all that kind of stuff. So as a kid, I was, I was raised on a really heavy diet of, of music and mostly rock and roll and stuff. But when I started, when I first picked up the guitar, I hadn't had any aspirations prior to that to start playing guitar. So I knew absolutely nothing about it. And the first electric guitar I ever bought was a Les Paul copy. And I, a lot of guitar players that I liked played Les Pauls. So it was, I think essentially it was just a cool looking guitar that I gravitated towards. And then over the next couple of years, I trial and error with a lot of different styles of guitars 
And, uh, and at that point I started to really identify more with a guy playing a Les Paul and what that sounds like and a guy playing a Strat and what that sounds like. And I just ended up naturally and comfortably back with a Les Paul and it's just always been um, a tonal thing that just sort of speaks to me. You know, I, lo I love the sound of a lot of guitars but I don't feel as at home with any other guitar besides Les Paul. It's just, it's the best sort of conduit to um, express myself with, you know. Um, back in 1986, when I did the Appetite for Destruction uh, record, um, my manager gave me a, basically it was a, a copy of a Les Paul 59. So, I, at that time, I don't know if they were doing 59 reissues, but it was this really beautiful um, handmade 59 copy, basically. And so I used that for um, that album and consequently, uh, you know, many albums since then. And so at one point I was went to Gibson and I said, well, why don't we make a real Gibson copy of a Gibson copy? So basically the Slash Les Paul um, is modeled after the 59 copy of a Les Paul that I've had since 1986. When uh, my old band Guns N' Roses was opening for the Stones at the Coliseum and I think that was the first the first concert I ever went to as a teenager um, that I bought tickets for and the whole you know was the, the World Music Festival at the Coliseum so there was very strange feeling going in there and playing there for the first time but I mean there's there's moments like that peppered through my career uh, from from the beginning up into the present, you know. Probably the thing that keeps me doing it is the same thing that got me started in the first place. I mean, I just I love music and I love guitar, and I love solo guitar. I love riffs. I love everything about rock and roll guitar. And there's you know it's a never ending. There's there's so many great things that you can strive for with it. There's always things to discover with it. You know, I mean, it's just an ongoing passion.